computer. And we are good. Okay, welcome everybody to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Erin Shea. We'd like to welcome our guest of honor, Marlena Rose. She's going to be on a very uh, fun uh, presentation along incorporating videos and tours of private collections. It's going to be a very uh, interesting um, presentation I'm looking forward to. All the whip whip works in progress, works in place. So to start off the presentation, I'm going to stick over your screen. So I'm going to mute everybody with the magical M. And Marlena, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, I'll ask to unmute you. Maybe you'll do it there. Um, but I'll start taking over your screen and showing you first our uh, PowerPoint presentation. So here we go. Let me get it going. And we are going to be on. Let me switch back to Zoom. There is my Zoom screen. There it is. It'll be on our and I'll share screen. Screen to share. Okay. You should be looking at a full picture of Marlena Rose. And then are you unmuted? I hope. Okay, good. I hear you too. So Okay, good. Yay! Master of technology. Thanks for being here, everybody. And here we go. So um, we're first going to start off talking about uh, Marlena Rose's CBS Sunday, Sunday morning episode was on recently on CBS. And um, it had an opportunity for 7,000 viewers to see um, what Marlena Rose... Million. Had, 7 million people had to, to see. And it was a season premiere on CBS. And it was a great opportunity to expose contemporary glass art through Marlena to the world. And it was, it was huge. Everybody saw it on TV and we're going to preview it here. So everybody who missed it or wants to get a, a review on it can check it out. It's about six minutes long, a little bit less, but I'm looking forward to watching it with everybody right now. It should be playing. It looks like it's going slow. This Sunday morning sun looks pretty cool right now. Oh, it just kicked out. Let me try it again. This Sunday morning sun looks pretty cool right now. Is really looking to fight me right now. Give me one second and I'll try it again. This Sunday morning sun looks pretty cool. Right now. Oh, I've never seen it happen before. Give me one second to skip ahead. This Sunday morning. Hmm. Well, let me try a different way. Give me one second and I will. We're going to take away your master title. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. It just did not like it. Give me one second to cue it up in the old fashioned way. That means right. he gets the hat. Go to Saturday, nor sun, uh, Saturday nor Sunday. Here we go. Try to get I do admire how the Spanish ad, left pride in the siesta. The you siesta can, we came up with that. That was that. our idea to do nothing. <laughs> Seems like the idea of someone who has a massive hangover. I apologize for that and try it again. Seems like you want. The Sunday morning sun looks pretty cool right now. But not long ago, it was hot stuff. Lee Cowan has a portrait of the artist. Light and glass have had an almost spiritual connection for centuries, but rarely quite like this. Glass, I think of as smooth and pretty, and, and these have a rawness and a mass to them. You don't like delicate little things. Seems like you want big hefty things. Yeah, I know, I know. The smallest people have the biggest ideas. <laughs> <laughs> At five foot three, she doesn't yeah, exactly cut a towering presence, but when an idea strikes her, Marlena Rose is on fire. Yes. And then right in here, beautiful. Her medium is 2,000 degree molten glass. Her fascination, it's unpredictability. Her motto, no fear. I didn't realize how much of an adrenaline junkie I am. Is that what you get from it? I really do because... You get a buzz. I get a buzz because, you know, you could really hurt yourself. But the danger, she says, is worth it. The glass is so seductive and so beautiful and ethereal. It's such a beautifully spiritual material, um, but you have to get the shape right. To get that shape, she uses an ancient but rare technique called sand casting, so named because of that sandy mold, which gives the liquid glass a brief but comfortable home. So it has to be hard enough. That it'll hold the shape that you're going to press into it. She's one of only a handful of artists actually trying to do this. When she started, nearly every glass studio thought of her as 
the proverbial bull in the china shop she couldn't find anywhere that would let her work. I want to come in and use equipment and pour molten glass, and I'm going to make a mess in your studio. <laughs> Why don't you want me? You know, it was hard having the door shut in your face, and no, and no, and, you know, maybe it's just too hard. Maybe it's just too hard. But she never gave up trying. And finally, this studio near her home in Clearwater, Florida, relented. And so, for the last 20 years, she's been turning out her signature pieces. Buddha heads, for one. Butterflies, another. African pieces, too, are a favorite. She's happen. in more than a dozen galleries. And her work was recently a featured exhibit at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art in Indiana, which all made the mold that she poured for us all the more special. Our Sunday morning sun. She first crafts it in styrofoam, gluing it together with the help of her two kids and her husband, okay. Thomas. Once built, the piece is pressed face down into that wet sand. It's then pounded and packed, and when it's gently lifted back out, what's left in the sand is the memory of even the tiniest detail. Came up pretty well. Yeah. The excess sand is then vacuumed away, and a golden layer of powdered glass, in this case, is sprinkled into that mold. What comes next starts the clock ticking on a process where there is no room for error. I just love how it's this dance amongst all of us, and there's danger, and it's excitement, and who knows how it's going to turn out. That, that to me, is, is thrilling. That dance starts as soon as the glass is at the right temperature to be poured. It starts cooling almost as soon as it hits the air, which is why, almost immediately, Marlena starts blasting it with a blowtorch, and it could all go south in a second. And if it cools too fast, the whole thing cracks and you're done. Whole thing cracks. Bit by bit, the sand is carefully removed, readying it to be transferred to the cooling oven. But bringing down the temperature slowly is so critical, Marlena even lights Thomas's gloves on fire. To warm you up. To make sure they're hot enough not to traumatize the glass. How did you get roped into helping out? <laughs> I'm married to. <laughs> <laughs> the result is always a surprise. This one, for example, was supposed to be all red glass, and yet gold mysteriously bubbled to the surface as it cooled. What did you think when it came out? I jumped up and down. <laughs> I was like, it's pretty good. You just never know what you're going to get. And when it came to our son, neither did we. What do you want? people to take away from your work? What do you want them to experience? I want them to feel something. I want them to look at it and feel it. And if they feel something, then I've done my job. And with the sun finally streaming through our own little earthly star, feel we did. This game time Thanks. internetting room, this work for what a, what a great, uh, great presentation to have to share. It is absolutely awesome. So yeah, they did a great job. They, did they were a great here job. for about four days. What should have been, you know, every day should have been a couple hours. They were here for 15 hours. They were fascinated. It's really cool. got I got to ask where that sun is today. Did they take it with them or do you still have it? Your studio? Yeah, I gave it to them. Very nice of you. It's the executive producer. He's, uh, same guy for 40 years. He flipped out, so of course I had to give it to him. <laughs> what is that? That's great. Well, great. Figured out the technical issue there. I was switching slides automatically. I stopped that, so we should be all good to go for the presentation. So now we're going to get a tour of Marlena Rose's studio right now. Welcome to my gallery. I'd love to give you a tour of the pieces that I have here right now. This piece is called The Color Progression. It's a study in color. I love to break things down to bold simplicities. This next piece is called the Bell of All. It's a Han Dynasty inspired piece. This piece was most recently seen at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. It can go indoors or outdoors. 
Next one, butterfly inspired by my girls. Buddha, ancient horse. It's a very new piece. Inspired by my love of horses. I'm an equestrian. This piece is the African mask wall. It's doing a lot of African inspired pieces in the 80s. Next one is called the Red Memento. Also can go indoors or outdoors. O series. And finally, the Buddha wall. Thank you for coming to my gallery. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. That was great. Great family help there. That's awesome. Yes. We broke them in. <laughs> Great. And your, your location, uh, if you walk out the front door, are you uh, right downtown or where are you in relation to downtown? Yeah, we're in downtown. It's a very small downtown, one block. But we're about walking distance to the marina. And the beach is another 10 minute drive, Clearwater Beach. That's great. You have a beautiful space. Yeah, that's why we, we love the brick wall. Um, it was it needed a lot of work. Dirt floor, we put in concrete floors and we did everything, all the walls, Tom's designed. We've been in here about five years now. It's always changing the, the work, you know, as I finish it, and it's going to different shows and galleries. And so we enjoy it for a short period before they leave. Beautiful space, really. Thank you, Tim. So I'm gonna check, make sure this is the right video. Marlene is gonna give us a glimpse of her, one of her newest series, the Talking Heads series. A lot of the works are uh, in process of being finished, so she's giving us a VIP preview of these works. We have one behind me, as you can see, I'm carrying it in my house. <laughs> the uh, virtual reality, but just gonna give uh, with these two videos. Make sure this is the correct first one. Welcome to my warehouse. I wanted to show you some of the latest bodies of work that I'm working on. This one is the Talking Heads. These are couples. There's conversations going on. I'm looking at the yin and the yang uh, of relationships. I'm exploring that. And I wanted you to be the first to see this new body of work. Great, great preview. And then we'll take another gander at some of the lighting that's incorporated into the work when it's lit up. Right now you're seeing all of them on a dark blanket, but I wanted to show you what happens. All of you know what happens when a little light comes through the glass. It's a whole other thing. Oh. And that's one. I'll just show you another for fun. This goes to show how strong Marlena is. <laughs> <laughs> they're real pieces of glass and he's just cranking them like they're toys. It's impressive. <laughs> okay, so we are going to quickly ask if anybody has any questions about us, what they've seen so far, studios. I've asked a couple. If you, if you have any, feel free to unmute yourself, um, else we'll move on. Marlena, uh, yeah. what inspired this head series? What was your inspiration for it? Well, I have to say, I've been thinking about relationships. Thomas and I have been together nearly 30 years. How is that possible if, we're, if I'm only 39? But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that. You know, we started working together full time, I'd say about 15 years ago, and that's not always the easiest. Um, we had kids pretty late and you know, just, just working things out and creating on the relationship. You know, I have such wonderful collect, so many collectors that I've been in contact with, they've been together 50 years, 60 years, 40 years. You know, so I just, I just started thinking about what makes it work, you know, and 
the differences, how different we are, but yet, <laughs> you know, we, we work it out. So this is an exploration in just that relationships. And so they're black and white typically right now, just to show how different we are. Um, you know, some of them are a little more similar and you know what they're thinking about it's a bit abstracted so that the viewer can complete it but that's that's basically in simplicity what they're about marlena how are you going to mount the heads what are, are you going to use bronze uh, the wall pieces or what are your um, ideas well right now the one that aaron has is um for the larger ones i've done these smaller ones i have here i should have shown you the um they were on the floor, but you see how much smaller they are than his. And these are going to be mounted completely different than that one. They're going to be situated into a, um, a steel framework that's slotted in because I want you to be able to see what's going on in the backside because I think the backsides are, are also so interesting and I don't want to block it with, you know, something going up the back. So what I'm going to do is slot them into, um, a metal frame kind of like Aaron's but there's going to be like the neck is going to be sitting into a bit of metal um, we're pretty good about if somebody has a request for wall mounted self-lit I've gotten pretty good about how to do that with all my work so if somebody says you know I I, I love it tabletop but we don't have any more room I try to be accommodating and and if I feel like I can, you know, do it justice on a wall, um, then I will. But I, I, I'm not like, oh, it has to be tabletop and that's it. Like I could come up with a design that makes it freestanding. I, you know, I'm not limited. It's just initially the idea that I come up with, in, in this case, is a tabletop one with the steel framework, clipping it, holding it delicately. On, on Aaron's, you can see there's like, um, an edge around it mm -hmm. so you can still see the back side. I decided to not do that on the smaller ones because I thought it was just too too intricate and I, I like this other design. I wish I had that to show you. Um, maybe I can grab it somehow. Anyway, but yeah, so that's, that's how they're both going to be um, presented. Great. Any other questions and we'll move on. Marlena, it was yes. like in the video like the sand was wet or the sand had a, a very grainy sort of granular quality. I was curious, is that the case? Is the sand actually wetted so that you can get it to the right consistency? So it's like a, a tougher sand for the, the glass to butt up against? Great question. So this sand is, um, since it's green, it's semi-precious stone. It's um, ground up peridot. So it's not even sand, but it looks like sand. And I always add a little bit of moisture and a little bit of clay so that it will remember the impression that you put into it. It's, there's a, a really exact consistency that in the, in the Sunday morning feature, I was, I was balling it up and then I let go. And if it kind of stays in a ball, that's how you know it's, it's, it's a good, and then you crack it with your finger and you can see that it's the right consistency, it's not too dry. And if it's too wet, then the glass will bubble um, and it'll ruin the mold completely. So it is a fine line between, you know, too dry and then it won't hold the shape or too wet will cause the glass to bubble. So it, it's, it's a very exact thing. Um, so when you pour the molten glass in, is the sand at a certain temperature or does that not matter at that point? It's actually, it's room temperature and it's, yeah, it's not heated up. We've been experimenting recently with another sand technique where you do have to heat up the mold completely. It's a totally different kind of a sand. And um, we have to heat that up, put it in the cooling oven and get it up to 500 degrees, take it out cast um, but this is new for us we're doing a special project um, with this other type of sand but typically for the last 30 years i've been using this type of sand that just is room temperature and it's completely fine it doesn't cause the glass to crack 
well. So you said that it's a crushed peridot. Is that like peridot the crystal? So it's actually like a crystallized, pulverized sort of matrix? Yes. Wonderful. And I've been using this sand for, same sand for 30 years. Literally, we just replenish what is on the ground and, you know, just throw that away. But we'll just, at the end of a year, I'll just add a little more. But I've been using the same sand for all this time. It's just, it's so wonderful that you can recycle it and just reuse it and reuse it. You just add water to it. Because obviously when you pour the molten glass in the sand, it dries up, it, you know, dries up. So we just re-wet it. And, um, and then there is, you know, a percentage of, of bentonite clay that I add to this um, peridot so that it also binds, you know, and it, it holds the form better. But it's interesting, I, I briefly mentioned this with the glass group. Uh, I've been using the same sand, thought that it was the best sand. And then my little daughter did a science project and she had no idea, no preconceived ideas. And she took builder sand, uh, ground up shells. She did a whole experiment to see, she made a little mold. It was the cutest thing. And without knowing what was what, the best impression was made from builder sand she found. It was crisp and I'm like, are you kidding me? This olivine, which is ground up peridot, is extremely expensive. <laughs> so there's a whole experimentation that I have yet to do based on her science project, but I'm thinking maybe you could use anything really. I thought that if you use regular sand, it would stick to the glass because glass is sand. So I always thought that that wouldn't be workable, but in this case it was. So you know, it's such an experimental and new technique for glass since the 70s. And it's like, as I said, you know, you're told this is the best way. You just do it. And then one day somebody says, well, what about this? And then you're thinking, well, maybe that'll work too. So there you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. I sure. just one last thing before yeah. somebody else jumps in is I was sharing your art with a friend of mine the other day. And their friend said, she has to be Buddhist. There is so much classical Buddhist iconography here in her art. So I just thought I would ask. No, I'm, I, I am an appreciator of Buddhism. I've studied so many different religions and I'm fascinated by them. It's one that I really relate to very strongly, but I'm not. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Thanks everybody, let's continue on. I'm gonna take over your screens again and we're gonna start the presentation by, Mar by Marlena, here we go. And uh, jumping back into it, going back in time. And here we go, Marlena Rose works in place. And without further ado, I introduce Marlena Rose. Thank you. So this is how I generally cast in formal wear. <laughs> Um, the reality is, is we have been so lucky here in Florida. I don't know why, but we have been considered an essential business because we're manufacturing and we work in a warehouse and there's only a few of us. So I have had the good fortune of being able to really focus in on production over the last four or five months. Um, I'm still in the studio as we speak over 100 degrees in our studio. It's intense. <laughs> it is super intense. Um, so when I thought about this presentation, I thought, you know, it might be fun because I really do miss traveling. I miss the shows. I miss the interaction with the collectors. That's why I'm so happy about seeing all of your wonderful faces, familiar faces, friends. Um, so I just thought I'd share some incredible homes that the work I have seen it in, um, in different settings. I thought it might be fun to see it just out of the gallery setting and in a home setting. So that's what I'm gonna present here. So this is the first of the talking heads that I showed and sold immediately. I was super excited that somebody loved it enough to buy it. Um, and then the second one is at Habitat. And um, this is in Miami, this home. Go to the next slide. And this is a cool one. This is on a mega yacht, 60 foot mega yacht. They had to have artwork, which I love. 
and you know they wanted it on the wall which i thought was a great idea that's great this is in malta this is an older piece i just wanted to show you because it's so unusual for me i mean it does have does have the ring and that concept but it's a bit of a different it's a great display the uh buddha heads lit yeah how are they lit just oh how are they lit okay so this um this idea on all the self-lit pieces basically is I have a box behind the heads that have the lighting in it. So that the light is right behind the head. Um, and then, you know, they have electric behind the head so you can plug it in and uh, recess light. And then the metal frame clips over the wood box and then the heads slide into the metal frame. So it's three parts. It's the wood box with the lighting, then the metal frame, and then the glass heads. And then the, the, the purchasing client can wire it into their electricity or just plug it into the wall, depending on how they want the aesthetics to work. Yes. And um, this is in a corporate uh, headquarters of a business, postcard business. It's beautiful. I love the colors. Thank you. And this is a self-lit, same way with the lights in the box and then the metal frame over it. And then the glass head slide in. This is also on a mega yacht? Nope, probably not. It's just- Home. <laughs> Beautiful. And uh, the, I have, have the good fortune of having uh, an ex-architect help me with the rendering. So if somebody has a, a space, um, Thomas will, you know, mock up some proposals of what we think would look good, a couple choices, and then um, they can see how it would look exactly on their wall. So that's been a great tool for me to uh, make it so people don't have to really envision how things could look. It'll, we'll know exactly how it'll look. So this is in an outdoor setting. It's one of my butterflies. I love the, the sun behind it, making it glowing in Florida, Boca Raton. Same client, outdoors. That's great, outdoors 20, at, yeah, in Florida, why not? That's great. Yeah, we bolt those into a concrete base. You can see that right there. This is actually in your neck of the woods, Aaron. It's uh, in the Michigan area. How tall is that display? Yeah, I made it about six feet tall. So it's a pretty wide uh, butterfly, 28 inches wide. Wow. That's Was an anniversary gift. <laughs> Very nice. Is that all the same color glass? All the same color. Hmm. They wanted it that way. Very Nighttime, daytime. Bolted uh, down. It's also course. in the northern area. I think it was uh, Illinois. Uh, uh, was the same mold used for all nine Buddhas? Uh, same stamp, yes. Stamp? Same mold. Okay. See how different they can look, even though they're the same yeah. color. The, the lighting changes it, the location changes it, so right. this is unique. And but that was uh, pretty Lynn, cool. The being the glass being outside in uh, varying temperatures like that does not compromise it. You know, I haven't had any issues. Um, I do worry about winds, and so I tell people to take the glass in in Florida if there's, you know, hurricanes and things like that. So I'm worried more about things flying into the glass. Um, I did have one piece uh, withstand a tropical storm where I told them to take in the glass and they didn't. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good. It's a good test. <laughs> good test. Great. This piece is uh, similar to the tree, huh? Yeah, which I thought was so am amazing the fall and you took that picture of the client all, all these people all these pictures are from clients which i just love because then you can kind of see where they end up the home they have that they did well for themselves <laughs> yeah i often ask for photos once works in place so i can see it and then share it with the artist so this is great you have the records like this yeah it's in arizona desert tree call that piece Um, 
piece that's sold to one of your collectors in, um, here in Michigan. It's beautiful. Love that in the snow. And this is in Philadelphia. This is one of the um, Depression era glass pieces, Vaseline glass. And they lit it with a black light at night. And I'm told when you drive across the Ben Franklin Bridge, you can see it glowing in the distance. Great. It's always amazing to see how people end up with their own displays and how your work can really make it pop. Yeah, she, they told me that they built this whole Asian um, display ar around the piece. They designed this pond and everything around the piece they told me, which was... <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's super peaceful. Yeah. So this is um, the kimonos, which is the latest body of work in Florida. That's also quite large, right? Yeah. That is, I think, about 76 inches tall. And then they raised it up. So it's bolted into a concrete base that, that's about nine inches tall. So of course, they had all of that wonderful landscaping, so they wanted it raised up so that you can yeah. see it. Great. Oh, this is the one that survived Tropical Storm Debbie. So this was on loan for the 50 year um, anniversary of the Studio Glass Movement. It was there for about four months. And then the next slide, you'll see it's permanent home. Location. Isn't that great? I just love yeah. that. Beautiful tone. Yeah. And then this was a gift to my mother. She has a very traditional home in New York. And I was surprised how, how well it went in a tr traditional home. I thought, you know, the work is seemingly modern, but it's an ancient image. So it, it really works well in her house. And then she moved it from there to this location. Fine. And she is just finishing redecorating that whole room, she said, around the piece. Great. There's a Christmas tree back there, I see, too. Hopefully. Yeah, that was Christmas. It was last <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> uh, this is in a mountain home in Park City, Utah. Very well. Uh, this was designed for that room. You know, we did some renderings of what would look best. And each one of those heads is a different mold. Gotcha. And, how and actually, the, the lantern above is John Lewis glass, if anybody knows him. Yeah. I thought they looked nice together. Here's uh, an installation. You've been there, Corey. This is in Boca Raton. They just put it on the floor, which I thought looks really nice. This was actually the first of my butterfly series, um, very abstracted butterflies. And then I went more realistic for the girls. But I love the way this looked on that space. Yeah, Not an easy nice. install. <laughs> <laughs> right, it looks great there though, worth it. We're worth it for sure. Yeah, black and clear. I just like this little punctuation mark here of this bell next to that painting. So that was a nice, simple placement. And then this, you know, gets the backlight all day, just lights up that butterfly. Again, this is just natural light coming through the bees, no special lighting. So it, it definitely changes all day long. Gotcha. How is that uh, circle or the O held in place in that piece? Yeah, it's, um, we, I designed it so that it was floating. So there's like two clips. There's a, a clip um, at nine and three o'clock, it sets in. And then there's one at the bottom at six o'clock that it just sits into. And gotcha. then on the tray below it, there's two you know, rods coming out that the tray rests on underneath it. So it's just a floating presentation. It's, it's, it's well done. Thank you. This is one of the few bodies of work that I actually polish 
the edges. I, I typically like the rough look that it looks unearthed and you know it could have been an ancient relic. But with this one, I really like the ribbons of color that were added and what's going on in there. You know, the um, it was poured upside down, so the half domes would have been the other direction. So when I added the powdered color, uh, I did a layer of, of, you know, a ladle of clear, then I added the powdered glass, then another layer of clear, then more powdered glass. And what happens is, is the color is trying to rise to the surface. So you see, you know, sometimes the bubbles coming up, trying to get up, but then it's frozen. So you see the process of what's going on in there. And I just think it's fascinating. And so with that piece, you know, I've seen it on a dining room table or behind a sofa and you can really study and look into that piece. So that's one of the, I think the only pieces I really polish the edges to show it. An African piece, I just love the simplicity of how people decorate, you know, just a few choice pieces. And I think it's very elegant, this display. And my work usually likes being in front of a window just because you're getting that light from behind on the smooth side. So it just lights it up. So if you can't get that, I say, you know, you just get backlight with a track light. So this uh, found a home at Imagine Museum. Thanks to Corey and Aaron. This is in the Hamptons. Just love the simplicity of that. Yeah, beautiful. The glass right there at the end of the hallway. At the end of the hallway. It's actually inside. It's not that, that window. There's a window behind it. Very neat. It's a really big piece very labor intensive. Each line on that piece, I, you know, took a spoon, I took the ground up frit, I laid it on the sand, I embedded it with my finger, then I did the next line, took a scoop of the frit, laid it on the sand, embedded it with my finger. <laughs> so that was probably eight hours worth of that before we poured it. And right before we poured it, I said, you guys better not mess this up. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> the, uh, the, ed the edges of that piece are defined by the sprinkling, the, the, the laying that you're doing in. Do you ever have to do any work to the side, or is it exactly the way you want it when it comes out of, comes out of the sand? Well, once we had, um, before I did the finger, Technique. Pressing in the sand technique. It's a very, very uh, technical thing there. But before I learned that, I had a piece, which I didn't do at one of the first, and the first ladle of glass popped, you know, like the pressure of it created this blip in the lines, in the stripes. So I called that piece the blip. And I thought, oh God, no one's going to ever want the blip. And of course it found found a home, somebody loved the blip because it was not perfect. But that that can happen because the, that frit is just resting there on the sand. So I had to embed it in this, you know, a little bit so that it wouldn't move with the force of the ladle hitting it. Yeah. But as far as the edges, um, you know, I now do, like I have a little stencil that I use that I lay into the mold and it will come in about an inch on either side so that when I put the frit down the line, um, you know, it doesn't go to the edge. And how long does something like this size a needle for? Um, typically my work is about a week, 100 hours. But, you know, with the larger pieces, the, you know, more intricate pieces, uh, two weeks, three weeks. But this one was, was a week. It was fine. That's great. <laughs> I, I, I spy something. I spy. <laughs> Santa Fe, New, New Mexico. I just love the simplicity of this. The fact that it was on, just on the ground. I, that was the collector's idea. I loved it. So this was an interesting project. This is uh, on Worth Avenue in Palm Beach. And it was a fountain sitting there. It's, um, they were looking for the right 
uh, piece to go in front of it, sculpture for years, it was sitting open and they were waiting for the right work of art. And um, just the way how things go, this lady, you know, she just got a tiny little Buddha sitting on her coffee table and her, I think it was her brother, came to her house and said, tell me about that artist. And he happened to be the woodworker for this, these people. And um, so they, he showed it to them, they loved it and wanted to know if I could do something for this space. Now, this, the head that you see there is a superimposition of it, but that is 11 times the size of a, a regular head. So when we realized that it had to be that big, you know, oh, sure, we can do it. <laughs> and then, you know, it really pushed us to the next level of scale and what we could do. And so, you know, we did the renderings of what we, our plan was. And, um, you know, with the help they had, you know, pool people and contractors and lighting. And we really had help to make this piece look its best. So you can show the next slide. So that's how big the mold was in the end. Uh, it took, what was it, 12, 11 or 12 ladles. Uh, at the time, we came up with an idea with four poles, four guys, and they literally lifted this up and put it in the cooling oven that way. It was backbreaking. So since then, we've come up with a a hoist system, which has been around forever, but um, you know, old technology that we should have used, but but now we are. <laughs> um, yeah, so this would anneal for weeks. It's a big, it's a big boy. Big boy. And so then the next slide shows, you know, us figuring out the placement. We had to cast a concrete base that was above the water, the piece, was sitting in front of the water. I didn't want it ru running on the glass. Um, we met with lighting, you know, they're lighting people and we, we had help. Normally we will we'll do everything for the client, but in this case, they had people. <laughs> so we use their people. And then this is how it ended up. And uh, I was super happy with with it. So if you're ever on North Avenue, there's only a few houses on North Avenue. You can see it driving by. It's, wow, it's amazing. Lights up. It was a great, it was a great job. Beautiful. So then this was also a site specific piece. Uh, somebody loved my bells and they had an idea to put bells in their wine room. So there it is. <laughs> That's the same piece that I was standing next to. But I just love it how creative people are with, okay, we want sculpture in our wine room. And she loves the, like, if you look at the blue bell at the bottom, she loves um, elephants. So I asked if I could do something and, uh, you know, something with an elephant. So I came up with that abstracted idea. So I, you know, I'll work with people if they have ideas that I think, you know, something that I'm in agreement with, or I like the idea, or I think I could do it justice. So that was that cool one. This is an interesting project. This was somebody in Hawaii who wanted a Buddha wall, but they insisted that we come to Hawaii to see the wall, to really understand the wall. How would you feel about coming to Hawaii to see this wall? I'm like, okay, hold me back. So we flew out there and we, we brought this, this one head just to show them they had never seen the work in person. So we thought, you know, at least they'll be able to touch it and get a sense of the, um, the head and how it could look. So we, we have that beautiful night light um, evening light as the sun is setting, so we show, we're showing them how it could look. And um, so here's their wall. We, we did some specific things in the heads. They wanted some Hawaiian uh, imagery within the Buddha head, like a little flower that's typical of Hawaii and some of the cave drawing ideas. 
So there, if we don't have a great picture of that is in Hawaii. <laughs> I wish they had pulled back a little so you could see how it really looked, but there it is <laughs> installed. We didn't install it, unfortunately. We didn't go gotcha. back. And then, funnily enough, um, somebody that worked for those people said, I think there's a sculpture of yours up the road. And, you know, sometimes when you, you give a gallery a piece, they, you don't know where it goes or who it goes to. So this was a total fluke that up the road, there was a piece of mine. And so she got me to be able to see it. And if you look there, they embedded the piece in lava rock. And it is part of their, it's like a, a fence to their house. <laughs> what a surprise that was, huh? What a surprise. Right up the road. It was crazy. So it was Rabbit really sword. nice to see where it ended up because I wondered, I said, where did it go? How many years had it been since you made that before you saw it again? Any oh, idea? it's got to be at least seven, eight years. I never knew where. I knew it was Hawaii. I didn't know what island. I didn't know where. And this lady happened to know it and knew the people and got us in there. And it was just such an incredible, Great. random thing. And then this is a kind of fun story. These people um, got this piece for this location. They thought it'd be perfect, but then they moved. And so I want to show you, they moved twice. <laughs> so the next slide is the next home. And that worked there. And then they downsized the next house. And there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> Came with them. That's great. And then I just thought I'd show you that, that animals can cohabitate with glass. <laughs> yeah. It's a great space. Kids can cohabitate with glass. <laughs> this is her gift. That little baby's, that's hers. So that's, she got a work of art for her. All, all children need art, glass art. Remember that, everybody. Thank right? You. I lesson. love that viewpoint. <laughs> very, very, very correct. And then cats can live with art. I always get that. I have cats. No, I can't have it. But it's pretty strong, my work. It's solid. I usually try to, you know, present them in a way that they're, they're going to stay there. And babies even like glass art. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, thank you, Marlena. I'm going to make a quick announcement for next week's uh, Habitat Now. We'll be visiting artist uh, Leah Wingfield, who has been doing some commission works that she's been eager to talk about with everybody in her style. Uh, and to follow up, I wanted to uh, give us some time for Q&A with uh, Marlena Rose. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can all, uh, if anybody has any questions, this would be the great time to ask. Maybe self-explanatory. <laughs> I guess you, <laughs> you have it all. Well, great, guys. Well, I appreciate your I have a question. Sure. Hello. So good to see you. Has COVID affected your work? As far as inspiration? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think as far as new ideas, yes. I definitely have a lot in the works. Like, I've had the opportunity the good part about the no-shows, even though it's not good at all, but is that I've been able to focus and not feel going and coming. And that's not easy, as easy, you know, it's just been my life. But now that I've had time to just do one thing, which is produce, it's been really nice and for sure have been inspired. Um, and I have a lot of ideas in the pipeline. I'm also, I've been really busy, you know, with many different projects and commissions and things that I've been completing and all trying to do at the same time um, the new ideas. So I do feel there's, it is an inspirational time just because it's difficult time. So, you know, you, kind of look at the, I try to look at the silver lining of it and the family time we've had and which has been incredible 
for us, it's just you realize how much time kids spend at school and you miss so much. So that has been a blessing. So there definitely has been a lot to be inspired by, a lot to be affected by, a lot to you know have new appreciation for, and a lot to communicate about. Because I think as artists, you know, we definitely communicate what's going on uh, in society through our art. So absolutely, there's a lot of new work in the works. Thank you. I, I just want to point out to folks that uh, my backdrop is not my kitchen. It's Marlena's show at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. Oh my God, look at that. Hi, Charles. <laughs> It's backwards because I don't know how to do the technology, but uh, it's a beautiful <laughs> show. And we had such fun working with you, Marlena. We'll do that again. That was so cool, Charles. That was, what a team they had. I just want to make a moment because they were so enthusiastic and so professional and such a joy to work with. I know you, Tim, worked with them as well. Just such a well, thank class you. Thank act. You. Thank you so much. And we, we, get the, we get to tour the museum with them at the AACG luncheon next Friday. Yeah, the 31st. Yeah. And my background is a collage of when Tim took the JRA to your studio. Oh, fun. That's great. That's great. Beautiful work. Charles, I saw you on Facebook uh, walking around the museum and, and <laughs> explaining pieces and showing others. And, um, are you going to do that for the AACG? Yes, that's that's part of the presentation. Three different videos and then some pieces from the collection. And uh, my homage to you for being the person who taught me glass and told me to go buy some. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did. I did what you told uh, me. Oh. I've told a lot of people that. Come <laughs> listen. <laughs> that's what Merrily said. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Charles. <laughs> thank you. Well, thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, yes, so great to see everybody. Thank you so Marlena much Rose. for your support. Thank it's you. Really, Marlena. really nice to see We're everybody. Nice to see you, Marlena. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys again in in the flesh. <laughs> Definitely. And this is the time, obviously, if you're thinking of anything that you like or space, feel free to contact me and Marlena anytime. We're excited to talk to you guys about anything and uh, about what she makes in her career. This is the time to plan. So thank you again, everybody, and be safe and farewell. Thanks, Aaron and Corey and Fern. Thank you so Bye, much. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.